I would venture to say, Greg, that you're not worried about the debt ceiling crisis because you're not banking on your social security paycheck. As somebody that hasn't amassed 300 rental properties already, and as you say, amassed an army of income producing properties that are gonna take care of you when you're older, I still think about how much should my wife be putting in her 401k and is that gonna be enough to live? How much can I, I have three rental properties right now, how many more can I get to? you know, in during the during my peak earning years, so that that starts maturing and starts producing cash flow in the back end. Because I need to move away from the idea that the institution that most people have counted on in retirement, which is Social Security and or pensions and or the 401k system does not give me the warm and fuzzies that when I get there, it's going to be enough. Yeah. Yeah, I I always wanted to build this retirement account for myself, independent of the other things that potentially were going to be there for me, like Social Security, you know, and, and I hope it's there. But for me, one of my goals and one of the reasons I started to acquire rental property so early on was because I had the opportunity to create wealth that wasn't dependent on somebody else doing something for me. And we all have that opportunity and real estate's a great vehicle to do that. So yeah, I hope it's there. You know, listen, when our federal debt is 119% of GDP or 130%, there's a chance that we'll still figure out a way to pay for social security. (laughs) Who knows? I hope it's there. But for me, I just wanted to own that responsibility myself. If I could own that responsibility and do something to set myself up very in a very positive stance, then I could only under promise and over deliver to myself if social security was there for me later on. Yeah. And I think we all have that opportunity to do that. I agree, man. I think what we've been seeing in our community is this evolution from real estate investors that think like real estate investors to people that are really just financial engineers that are looking at retirement down the line And they just simply want a better portfolio because the system isn't necessarily working. And I think that this type of stuff that going to continues to happen, right? Like is only going to push it that way. I've never really considered myself a real estate investor. I consider myself an entrepreneur that needs to be wise with his money. But, you know, in the three years that we've hosted this and made all these different relationships, it felt like early on, you know, what when I would bring up JWB and I would bring up the Not Your Average Investor Show, it was a lot of people trying to get educated on real estate because they wanted to be real estate investors. And as time goes on, it's becoming more people that are wanting to take control of their financial future a different way because the old way wasn't working. Are you feeling that or is that just me as a novice? No, I think you're right. I think I think people are desiring a better way to build a retirement account. They're desiring a better way to stack their assets. And you can label it whatever you want, stocks, bonds, real estate, crypto, whoever, whatever, but people are desiring a better way. The message I've been evangelizing for 17 years now is that real estate's a better way. I think that's what our our show has come more and more into. I know that's what our clients talk more and more about. It's not, hey, listen, how to become a real estate investor. Yeah. I mean, think about this. You own money in your stocks and bonds and your 401k. You have money in stocks in bonds, but would you go to a party and say, Hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a stock person, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, hey, correct. You know, correct. now you can put your portfolio in real estate, your 401k, your IRAs, you can put that in real estate, you can put 25%, 50%, 75%, whatever, but you don't have to go to parties now and say, Hey, I'm a real estate investor. You just are building a better retirement portfolio. Yeah. And it happens to be in real estate. Yeah. For the record, I still think it's cool to go to parties and say I'm a real estate investor, <laughs> but I think it's a trend that's going to get normalized to what you're saying, right? Like I think at, at some point, at some point, they made it easy to invest in stocks via the 401k. Before it used to just be like a, a group of people that were doing it, mm-hmm. right? Like then it became easy to do it atom- automatically at work. Mm-hmm. That didn't change people to say I'm a stock market investor. Exactly. Right. Then at another point, technology also allowed you to to be a stock market investor independently without needing the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And 
we, I love talking about category design and, ca you know, new categories create other categories. And at certain point, the combination of technology and data and know-how will create a new opportunity in a market, which I think is where real estate is going right now. Like real estate is right at that tipping point where the combination of technology, the amount of data that's available to everybody to standardize something and widgetize something. Mm -hmm. And the few companies that have like been in front of this have now created a way to do just that. You're not yet at the point where you can stick it in your 401k mm -hmm. through your company, but you are at the point that as a, as an individual investor, without having to really think too much about it, you can say, oh yeah, I got a portfolio manager for my real estate portfolio. And I just have this much allocated into that without ever having to consider yourself a real estate investor. Yeah, And I think it's happening in large part due to people wanting to control their own financial future. That is going to be a growing trend that I think we see coming. I think so. And I think it is so needed because I get to talk to friends, colleagues, clients, anybody I get to talk to. And if, if I ever had that conversation about where's your money, 80, 90, a hundred percent of their retirement accounts and any other assets that they're planning for retirement, it's all stocks, bonds, mutual funds, right? That we have such an over-dependence on an asset that is highly volatile, which is not a problem if you're young, but if that's all you know, eventually you're going to become old. <laughs> you're going to get to a place where you're depending on that value being there at retirement. And then you don't know if a pandemic is going to happen, a war in Ukraine is going to happen, if inflation is going to rage, if a debt ceiling crisis is going to happen, you name it. You don't know if those things are going to happen. And what if that happens to you at 60 or 65? Wouldn't it be better to have 50% of your assets in the stock market and then 50% of your retirement account in real estate? which has proven to be consistent over and over and over again. Like, doesn't that just make sense? Like, I'm so motivated to talk to people about that because yeah. I, I know with, you know, a lot of my friends and family invest with me. I know that as they get closer and closer to retirement age, I'm going to get phone calls that are going to be thank yous, right? It's going to yeah. be when I'm 55, my friend's 55 or 60 or 65 and something bad happens and a lot of their money's in rental properties managed by me, they're going to say, thank you. Because I didn't have to have my quality of life go down when the stock market went down because I had all of my eggs in that basket. So, yeah, man, I think I think what you said as far as this confluence of opportunity is happening right now. And there could not be a better time for people to be really thinking about how much money you have in one highly volatile asset. Yeah, 100%, man. So a couple couple notes here from the community. Ken Moline says, for us as older retired individuals, our combined social security income amounts to about 25% of our total income. Our prudent investments in JWB real estate over the last four years now provides 75%. And JWB income does a better job of keeping up with inflation than the stock, SSI? Yeah, stock social, security. social security. Oh, that's social security. And yeah. then Rhett Farber saying, I'm a passive real estate investor lending money to someone like JWB who actively invests in real estate, maybe not a sexy or high return considering appreciation over time, but solid 10% annual while sleeping at night as well. Love it. And then Chris Gonzaga says, when we were talking about being a real estate investor, he goes, it's a good road, but bumpy, which I think is another thing to talk about, right? Yeah. It's this idea. We were just talking about it this morning on the run. Yeah. That it's, if your 401k is doing its thing mm -hmm. and you are, I don't know, 45, 50 years old, mm -hmm. stock market takes a tumble, mm -hmm. right? Like we go into a recession. Mm -hmm. Your spouse is not sitting there at the dinner table saying, man, I told you not to put money in the 401k. <laughs> yeah. They're not saying, what's up with fidelity? Why isn't fidelity? That's not what fidelity promised us, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Yet, when we think about the real estate piece, if we are doing it, and let's say you have a turn, you know, one year, and then a year and a half later, you have an eviction. Yeah. But all this time, your house is worth 
way more than it was worth before. And maybe you lost, I don't know, worst case scenario, six months of six months of rental property income mm-hmm. in, in, in having a vacancy that you had to go change because there was the, the turn and you had to put a little bit of money into the property. Your net worth still would be higher than that money in the 401k that just took a beating over a recession. Right. And yet you're sitting there cursing this real estate investment. Yeah. And that's the bumpy road yeah. is thinking, man, this thing, I have a different relationship with this thing because I expected to do all this other stuff that I've never put the expectations on my Fidelity 401k. I say Fidelity because I was the, the company that, that managed my 401k the last time I was working corporate. Right. And yet, your net worth is still way higher and your path to retirement is still much closer than it was before, regardless of that vacancy or eviction or foreclosure or whatever it was. Yeah. It's like define bumpy. What's bumpy mean? Does bumpy mean that your actual value of your assets go way up or way down? Because that's the S&P, right? That's, that's, That's your typical 401k that's in stocks and bonds. Right, it goes way up, it goes way down, right? That might be somebody's definition of bumpy. But in real estate, we talk about how bumpy it is. But your your swings, your volatility is like this. Yeah. Right? Even if you have a big yeah. turn and it costs a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. The volatility of your net worth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if my net worth is in the market and it takes a 15% haircut. My my net worth just went down fifty percent. Yeah. If I if I have to evict a tenant and it costs me twenty thousand dollars, well, that's really high. But okay, super high, <laughs> right? Let's call it super high. Yeah. But my net worth of what that property is worth, what I can liquidate it for, yeah. and what I have options to to like do with that with that net value. Yeah. Still there. Yeah. I mean, so like you know. It will just run crazy numbers here, crazy right? Numbers. Let's say that you had $20,000 of expenses that like hit your bank account for your rental property because yeah. of all these crazy things you're talking about, but it's a $200,000 asset mm-hmm. and it appreciated 10% in that year, which is actually low compared to what it did last year. Yeah. It actually appreciated more, Yeah, but you'd be net neutral as far as your volatility of net worth yeah. in real estate. Yeah. It's just about the pain points. In traditional assets and stocks and bonds, it it is built in such a way to shelter you from the pain points, Mm -hmm. right? But ultimately, the asset is way more volatile. Yeah. So, like, what does it? What do they do to make sure that it shelters you? Well, it's through your company four hundred one k plan. So you didn't even see the money; it didn't even come to your bank account, and then you invested it. No, it was invested before you even made your net paycheck. Yeah. So you didn't even feel it. You feel like it's just money that's given to you. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, it is an asset that does not have the ability, if something goes wrong on a monthly basis, it doesn't have the, the ability for a capital call yeah. from you. Right. You don't have to reach into your bank account to pay for whatever stocks, bonds related. It's just, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, so that's all really good stuff. Yep. But at the end of the day, the asset value goes up and down like this. I mean, we're down 15% from a previous high, yep. which was last year in the S&P 500. It's down 15%. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, the most important thing is way volatile, but the experience of owning it is so easy and yep. so simple. So it lulls people into thinking that it's a better asset. Yeah. On the real estate side, and this has been our mission for creating this company, is how do we deconstruct this to improve this? But the real estate side, the rental property side, does such a good job of pointing out and putting in your face all of the negative things on the experience side. Mm-hmm. But the asset that's underlying it is incredibly stable and consistent and grows more than the stock market. So yeah. it's, you know... What happens on the real estate side that you're all probably worried about? You know, it's if a tenant moves out, it's a big expense. I might have to dip into my pocket to pay for it. That's a capital call. Mm -hmm. Capital calls in general real estate, that's a thing you got to be worried about. JWB, we do a lot of things to mitigate that risk. So if you have a question about how we avoid that for our clients, should be talking to us because that's not the same risk that you face as a JWB client. Yeah. And if you want to talk to JWB, go to chat with JWB.com. Yes, you should talk to us. Uh, helping you out that. here, bro. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and all of the benefits that come along. Well, the, and then it's, there's all the teammates that you have to 
handle, you know, to, to do typical real estate, yeah. you know, your real estate agent, contractor, your property manager, financing, insurance, everything is a different person. So, and then, you know, when something positive happens, you don't actually feel it in your bank account most mm -hmm. of the time. Because yeah. your biggest profit centers are home price appreciation, principal pay down, tax saving. So all of those hidden things create this incredibly powerful, consistent asset, but it's largely hidden from view on the rental property side. Yeah. yeah. But that's why we have an opportunity to build a great business. <laughs> if it was easy, everybody be doing it, everybody be investing in it. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Gonzaga from the illustrious Hudson Valley also says those bumps are also, by the way, tax shelters <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to real estate. There you go.